Hello everybody, this is the Empirical Audio File, and welcome to my channel. Today in this video is going to be a review on the Macintosh MCT 500 CD transport. Now, if you watched my last video, I did a whole video on the Conrad Johnson DR1 transport. And I've been using that transport for over 26 years. And I felt that it was time to see if a, another transport out there was as good or better. And is it worth even trying to upgrade? And if you watch my video, the transport is going into a Conrad Johnson Premier 9 here, DA converter. Excellent DA converter, tube DA converter, very well built, weighing over 20 plus pounds of DA converter on a floating ch chassis, the whole DA converter is, and it is an excellent, well worth the money the Premier 9 was and it was worthy of the Premier line from Conrad Johnson. Even though it's an older DA converter, it's still today, in my opinion, an excellent DA converter. However, <clears throat> using the transport of the Conrad Johnson, the DR1, I do not know if Conrad Johnson ever made a better transport than the DR1. In other words, did they make a Premier transport I don't think so. I think the DR1 was the only one they made. In my last video, I show you all kinds of uh, the, what the inside looked like and how they put uh, ferrite clamps in it and everything else. Now, in this transport, I decided that in all the reviews that I watch about the Macintosh transport, they always show the transport with proprietary wire that they give you with it, cable that they give you with it to go to their proprietary setup. And they give you a cable with this. And I think it's uh, two meters long. And that's if you have a newer Mac equipment to take the proprietary cable that they give you. But what about those who don't have newer Macintosh equipment or those who are like me, you may have a DA converter and you want a better transport. What do you do? You can't use that proprietary cable, right? But all the reviews are with using that proprietary cable. So I thought I wanted to do a review on what if you're going to use either the toss link, the uh, coaxial cable that they give you availability on the back of the Mac, transport and use your own DAC with their transport. And the reason I chose the Mac over other transports that are out there, it's American made, anything goes wrong with it, you can always keep the box packing, pack it back up and send it back to Mac to have it work on. That's great. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, going to China or Korea or Japan trying to get parts. Parts are going to be right here in the United States. And uh, its cost is that of other transports that are out there. Now, to give you a little lowdown, if this is the first time you're here on the system, the system, of course, uses the LTEC voice of the theaters, which I have had in my system. For 47 years, these have been modified. They sound absolutely great, the voice of the theaters. And for those of you who don't have CDs, uh, you may think, well, why would I buy a CD player? I have none. Well, I have thousands of CDs and thousands of records. And therefore, I'm going to invest in a good transport. Now, with my system that uses the Conrad Johnson equipment here, with my system using the Conrad Johnson equipment, which is your 
DA converter, your preamp, your amplifier, all of it, the Premier line. Definitely, I'm not going to go out and want to buy a inexpensive transport because I believe the Premier 9 is an excellent D to A converter and needs to have a good transport. Now, besides the DR1, Conrad Johnson DR1 transport, I've used Sony transports. I've used Carver transports. I've used Yamaha transports. Um, I've used other transports that uh, were also connected to CD players. And a lot of CD players will have a coaxial out or toss link out or, or something like that out where you can connect them up to a DA converter if you improve. Now, buying an all-in-one player doesn't guarantee that you're going to get an excellent DA converter and an excellent transport. There's going to be a compromise depending on price. It just depends on your system and is it worth spending the money to get an excellent transport like you see here with the Macintosh transport, the MCT 500. Now, you got to look at a transport if you're not really in the CDs. That transport is basically, it's your hole, it's your plinth, it's your tone arm, it's your needle and stabilizers all in one. Basically, that is what a transport is if you want to relate it to records. That transport is doing everything. So when we go out and you buy a record player or a turntable, basically a transport like this is a turntable. How much money do you want to spend on a turntable? You want to spend thousands of dollars on a needle, arm, turntable? That's up to you. What you're going to get out. The preamp, as you see above the Macintosh Phono preamp you see above, that is basically your DA converter. All that does then is send the signal over to your preamp. So a transport, if you don't invest money or get a good transport, that's like getting a cheap turntable with a cheap tone arm and a cheap needle. Okay, that's all that is. The better your transport, the more information you're going to get, the better it's going to perform as long as you have a DA converter that actually will show off what the transport can do. And that's the way you got to kind of think of as what a transfer transport can do. Now, how does this transport, this MCT 500, compared to the DR1 or any other transport that I've had on the system. And that's about what this whole thing is about, this review. If you don't want to watch any more of the video, it was simply something completely different and amazing. So if you don't want to go any farther with this video, then you could stop it right there. But I'll continue on with the video and explain to you how this transport differs from the DR1 Conrad Johnson. Now, the Conrad Johnson transport, even though it was a good transport, I felt it was an okay transport, good transport. It wasn't high-end transport like that of a Krell, Mark Levinston, a Wadia, but it was a decent transport. This, on the other hand, is, to me, a higher class of transport than the DR1 was. And I lived with the DR1 for several years. Now, let me explain. The DR1 was so good that if anyone listened to my system, they loved the way the system sounded with the voice of the theaters here. And so then the transport must have been doing something to really show off the voice of the theaters. And that's exactly what I'm going to see if this transport could do. So... In order to let you know some more information is 
I decided not to go with the proprietary cable that they give you. I'm going to go with the coaxial cable. And I'm going to go with Kimber's full silver Illuminatic cable. The Illuminatic cable is not an inexpensive cable uh, for that coaxial cable. They still sell it today, the silver cable. It is an excellent cable for your coaxial. And it's the best one that I have found of all the coaxial cables that I have tried on my system. The Illuminati was the best. So as far as I'm concerned, I got the best cable up to the best DA that is suited for my system. So let's see what the transport will do with coaxial not going with the proprietary cable. The first thing of it is, few complaints I saw people make is, all oh, the buttons on the Mac are plastic. They seem a little cheap. Well, don't underestimate the buttons. I have a plastic on-off button to my Conrad Johnson amp, the 11A. It's lasted for 27 years. Just because something's made out of plastic doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, for example, the Hunter original fans have a on-off switch on them with a chain. Those switches are tested to be on-off for over a million times. They're very good switches. Okay, you wouldn't turn around and say, oh, that switch is made out of plastic, therefore it's a piece of garbage. No. These switches that Mac uses, the switches that are on my Conrad Johnson, are the top of the line switches. So just because they are plastic doesn't mean they are garbage switches. If you want metal switches, it's just going to raise the price up. But it doesn't mean it's going to be better. It's just going to be different. In this case, they have aluminum tray to put your CDs on. One thing I noticed about the tray, it's not as deep as, let's say, the DR1 tray was. And therefore, because of that, uh, placing a stabilizer disc on top of a CD, much like the disc you see here. This is a carbon fiber stabilizer disc. Putting something like this on top of your CDs to help improve the sound is out of the question. It doesn't work. So that is one thing I noticed about this transport over any other transport I had. Any other transport I had, you could add a stabilizer disc, you can also use the, uh, if you look at the bottom there, there's an alter clarifier. It spins your disc. I noticed that when I've used the alter clarifier with the Macintosh, it does nothing. It doesn't change any of the sound quality. Nothing changes. So you can't use stabilizer disc. And the alter clarifier is basically the emperor's new clothes. It doesn't do anything either as far as improving the sound like it did off of other transport, including the DR1 that I had. So basically, you can use the transport out of the box as is. You don't have to add anything to it to improve the sound. At least, that's what I found out. The next thing is, it's a very well-made transport. It weighs 26 pounds. So was the DR1. It weighed over 20 plus pounds of transport also. A lot of that weight is basically metal, but the drawer itself, I think they said it's made out of aluminum. So decided to A, B the transport using coaxial. So let's remember that in this review, this is going to be 100% off the coaxial, which is good because a lot of people have their own DA converters or a lot of people don't have the proprietary hookups that Macintosh has set up for their equipment, or you may have an older Macintosh. So what can you expect out of a system that uses horn speakers? I am a horn guy. I like horn speakers. I like the Clips. I like the l -Techs. I like the JBLs. I like the Western Electric. I like the RCA. I like horn speakers. The only horn speaker out there that started changing the way we listen to horns is basically the Avangards, made in Germany. When they came out, they really changed the whole sound of horns to me. 
they no longer sounded like a horn speaker, like the LTEX or the clips or anything else. So how does this perform to the DR1? Well, the DR1, when it presents the music, everything is there, but it also presents the music along with other transports. You could still have horns. And what I mean by that is you may get a, uh, let's say, this CD right here. Okay, this is the Pink Panther by Tellart. And if you play the Pink Panther, they have the, in the very first, they have a triangle going of the Pink Panther. Uh, but when you do the DR1 or other transport, it will put the triangle up front. And this gives you a 3D effect which is neat when you have horn speakers. It's one reason people like horn speakers. You get a 3D effect where some things are going to just come out and they'll be in front. That's why they say horn speakers are forward sounding versus normal speakers are sound stages in the back. Well, with a good setup, you will have a depth of sound stage but you're also going to have like the triangles and the Pink Panther pop out in front of the speakers. However, on the Macintosh, this does not happen. The triangle is still there. You hear it. It's got better decay of the triangle, but the triangle is put back into the sound stage. Now, one thing different from this Mac that the DR1 and every other transport I have used, the one thing that's different is the Mac puts everything back into a deep sound stage. Now, a deep sound stage is something you really don't get off of horns. They're not designed that way. They're designed to be more forward. Anyone who owns a Klipsch, anybody who owns LTEX, they will tell you that. It's just the nature of horns. But with this transport here, hooked up to the Conrad Johnson with the Kimber Illuminati, you get a very deep sound stage, deeper than any sound stage I have ever heard in the 47 years I have owned these LTEX speakers and the 27 years I've owned my Conrad Johnson. It's the deepest sound stage. I, in fact, I did not even know the horns were able to make a sound stage so deep into the wall. And that's exactly what this transport does. It puts everything back in its place and takes what was popping out, such as the triangle that I explained to you, and sometimes uh, symbols and, and things like that, that would jump off the speakers, puts it back into the sound stage where it belongs. Now, I couldn't believe that the transport was actually doing that. Because you would think it would take more than a transport to do that. You would think it would take a DA converter. You would think it, it would take more than the transport. But this is just the MCT 500 transport doing this. It also had the dynamics that you wanted that was in the DR1. But it put everything back into a deep sound stage. Much like that, if I can explain to you, uh, like you would get from pro -X speakers like you would get from the Avalon speakers that, that were out there. They had this magical, huge depth sound stage. That's exactly what this MCT 500 is doing. It's putting the horns, making them have a sound stage. In fact, in my notes, I'm looking at my notes. One thing I put in the notes is that the horns don't sound like horns. In other words, it took the system even with these old LTEX here, and it took the whole system and made it sound more like Avangar's horn speakers. Now, this could be a pro or con that people may not like. They, my, most people who buy horn speakers get used to the horn speakers like Klipsch, LTEX. You get used to the way they are. But to have something actually come and change the whole system and now the horns don't sound like horns. Number Another thing, as I found out, the sound staging is deep and wide. However, it makes the speakers completely disappear. You're not listening to speakers anymore. You're listening to the
the sound stage that the speakers are making. Now, this is very unusual for horn speakers. To your some some of your transports and stuff are going to tell you here. I am. Here's the left speaker. Or here's the right speaker. It's going to pop out at you. And that's just the nature of the beast of horns. Okay. But with the MCT 500, that disappears. The horns don't jump out anymore saying, here I am, because it's taken away that, that, that pops out. Now, once in a while, something may pop out of the horn. And if you've never heard it with horns, the first time you hear it, it, it's kind of, some people will like it and some people may not like it to hear something jump out of the speakers ahead of the sound stage and everything else. I call it the 3D effect because now you're getting sound in front and you're getting sound in the middle and in the back. With the Mac, everything gets put back into the sound stage where it belongs. For example, if you take this CD here, this Patricia Barber right here, uh, Cafe Blue, and you listen to, let's say, uh, Too Rich for My Blood or uh, Nardius, okay, both those have a drum solo in the CD. If you listen to the cymbals, you will listen to the cymbals and you will hear them decay longer than the DR1 would do. And the placement of the cymbals in the soundstage are now back with the drum, back where they belong, behind Patricia Barber's voice. Not only do you hear the decay of the cymbals a lot better than the DR1, but the placement of the cymbals in the sound stage, you could practically take a BB gun and shoot where they're at. And the tonal quality of each cymbal is very distinguishable with the MCT500 compared to the DR1. Decay is longer. So now you get placement better in the sound stage, back where the drum kit actually is and not trying to pop out or not getting sent over to one side or the other side of the sound stage. It will be spread out between the speakers, each symbol giving its time and space and its location in that space and the decay of the symbol itself is a lot more prevalent than with the DR1 or any other transport I use. So that is a big thing. Now, when you listen to the MCT 500, this is all off a of coaxial. Remember, any other reviewer will tell you it sounded best with the proprietary cable. Now, if it sounds this good just with the coaxial, it's a shame that these people who are doing these reviews have kind of dissed the coaxial cable and only went with the proprietary cable, but it doesn't need to be. This is what I'm hearing. It makes the whole horn system sound more like a normal system than it does a horn system. That may be something you may not like. A lot of people buy horn systems because they like to horn. Oh, you still have the clarity. You still have the dynamics. You still have that jerking in your seat where someone, where something or something crashes or whatever, and you get jerked. These are all part of horns. This is what you get. The clarity of the horn, the, the CD transport seems to get the jitter and the timing just right. It's a great matchup to the Conrad Johnson Premier 9, one bit with this transport. I know because I've heard these CDs hundreds of times. I know what they sound like. I know how they present themselves. This transport does not take anything away. It gives you a sound stage for a horn system that's unbelievable. I never thought you can get such a deep sound stage with horns because everybody, oh, horns, it's a horn. Come on. You, you play a saxophone or something and it has the bite and, and, I'm there kind of presentation. But imagine if you could take the same saxophone off the same CD and play it, and now you still get the bite, you still get the presentation, but instead of being in your face, it's back in the sound stage where it belongs, like the way other speakers would portray it. Now, it's hard to believe that this transport 
made that much of a difference. However, it did. And it did with in spades. It did it like, wow. You know, I've always said that if you're going to change cables or if you're going to change something in your system, if it just changes something and it just sounds different, is it worth buying? And a lot of times it's not worth buying. It, it sounds different, but the other way sounded just as good. This this way just sounds different. But when you come to an item that you put into your system and it sounds better, then you have to think that maybe I'm making a good decision on buying the particular particular piece because it does sound so much better. The Mac makes another thing the Mac does. It takes the edge. Not that these l because they've been modify. Not that it takes the l here because they have been modified and they have really that, that harshness like a lot of people will complain that all oh, my clips, they have a harshness to them. I don't listen to them. No, these have been modified where a lot of that is gone. But the Macintosh Transport takes it to a new level, a complete new level of making the speaker sound like, well, what can I say? Just normal speakers that you would go out. Pick a brand of speakers that uh, that appeals to you, and now the horns are going to sound more like that. I always I put a note down. It now makes your system sound like an avant system. So if you ever listen to avant horns, that's what this transport does. It turns the Eltex and it makes them sound more like an Avogard system without the extreme expense. I'm going to tell you right now, is it something that you would like or is it something that you would hear? Well, if your system's not capable of it, if you do have CDs and you're listening to an uh, inexpensive CD player, and I shouldn't say inexpensive because CD players, you could spend $2,000 on a CD player, and I shouldn't call that inexpensive. But what I'm saying is if you have a good D to A converter, an excellent one that you're real happy with, a top line, like I said, this Conrad Johnson today, if they were to make this same Premier 9 DA converter today, it would cost you about $8,000 for that DA converter with the parts and how much it cost back when I bought it, counting in inflation. Pairing that DA converter to this MCT 500 is really transforming the whole system into something I didn't think it could be transformed into because of all the different uh, carriers that I've had, like the DR and the and the and the um, did the Carver. I tried that out, um, and the other transports that I use. They didn't compare to this. Of course, I'm sure there's always better than this. I'm, I'm sure, but at what price point do do we stop at? What? Where do we put the brakes and say enough's enough? You know, I I've went far enough, and I I have to stop. And I think what I'm trying to say is this is a pretty good stopping point with the Macintosh. You can pretty well buy this, and if you have, like I said, the Illuminati cable, you have real good coaxial cable, a real good D-Day converter, you're probably going to be very happy with it, but you'd have to listen to yourself. They usually give you 30 days to listen to something. Definitely out of the box, I could hear a difference immediately. And that's something that you don't normally hear is something immediately. You may hear things and you have to listen closely and you may have to listen more than once to see if you're hearing something right. With the Mac, it was no second guessing anything. Everything with the Mac had changed. Everything had changed so drastically, it was like night and day difference between the Mac MCT 500 and the DR1, night and day difference.
changed the whole system. And I would have to say it changed the whole system for the better. So that's it with this review. That's the best I can give you. By the way, good CDs sound great. And there are a lot of great CDs. A lot of people are out there that are streaming music. But, you know, if you want the best of the best, of course, you're going to go with the real to real. Everything's expensive. But if you want, to me, in my opinion, the second best and not stream music or a medium that's going to give you the second best, you're either going to have to go with records or you're going to have to go with CDs. That's it. Streaming will be third on that list. Like, like you take a CD like this, Sade, you know, and we remember her hit Smooth Operator. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Good sounding CD. There's a lot of manufacturers out there like, uh, like this Rebecca Pigeon one, for example, made by Chesky. Anything from Chesky or Telark is going to sound good. Any of these Patricia Barber. Patricia Barber must have her hands inside how her, the quality of her CDs are going to be made. Killer sounding CDs. Killer. Just just wonderful sounding. Far, far superior than what you're going to get off of streaming. Far superior. You're going to get more information, more of the nuisance. And that's another thing is if you don't like those little nuisance, don't, don't want to hear the, the, the studio, or if you don't want to hear the little nuisance that are in the music, then you don't want CDs because CDs are going to bring it out in spades. So I would have to say this is a big thumbs up for this Mac transport. I am quite surprised. I'm sure people are going to make comments. Well, there's this transport, there's that transport. I explained to you why I went with the Mac transport. It's American made and it be sent right down set all, I should say up. It could be sent right to New York where they make them and they'll fix them for you. Especially if you live in a rural rural area where you have no one to fix this equipment. Okay, there is nobody you can trust who knows enough about electronics to really get into the equipment and fix it. So you can always pack it up and send it back to Macintosh to have it fixed. They've been around for 75 years and I don't think they're going to be going out of business in the next five or 10 years. So until next time, this is the Imperial Audiophile. I hope you enjoyed the review. I gave it as honestly as I can. So until next time, happy listening.